As the novel coronavirus continues to spread around the world, officials are turning to increasingly extreme measures to slow it down. Ramy Innocencio is in China reporting on a city quarantined. And all trains and planes out of that city halted. Deserted streets telling the story of a country on lockdown. While we haven't gone that far in the US, officials here are encouraging people to stay at home and to cancel classes and public gatherings. But are we also heading toward mass quarantines and would they even work here? To find out more, we spoke to Lawrence Gostin. He's a professor of global health law at Georgetown University. I think to start, it would be helpful to define exactly what a quarantine is. Quarantine is when you're not known to be infected, but you've been exposed to somebody who is infected. Um, so you say you just shook hands with somebody that had COVID. Um, you don't necessarily have it, but we will quarantine you for the longest period of incubation of the disease. And in this case, that's 14 days. Mass quarantine is when we guard entry and exit from a city or a town and we confine everybody within those borders. Self-quarantine or isolation is completely different than mass quarantine. In the United States, um, during COVID, um, we've seen the largest federal quarantine in, in recent history. Some have been evacuees from Wuhan, um, but some have been people who are rescued off of um, the Grand Princess, just docked now in Oakland, and also Diamond Princess out of Japan, and then we evacuated our citizens back to the United States. Um, so we haven't seen anything like that in recent history. We've already seen self-quarantine or isolation in the United States, and I can see this uh, increasing exponentially that people um, shelter in place, they, mostly in their apartments, in their homes. That can be either voluntary, or it might be that you were ordered um, by force of order, but either way, it applies to individuals. That's what self-quarantine or isolation is. And how does that compare to something like social distancing? Social distancing is quite different. We use social distancing irrespective of whether you've been um, infected or exposed to a disease. At that stage, we're on to what public health people call mitigation. And all that means is that we're trying to slow the spread of the infection. Um, and so social distancing measures are things like school closures, postponing or canceling large gatherings, uh, things like political rallies. It's just a measure where we try to separate the population so that they're not, you know, really being exposed to one another, they're not, they're not um, you know, mingling in crowded spaces. What we want to do is we want to buy ourselves some time. So looking specifically at what happened in Wuhan, um, in your opinion, does that look to have been a successful quarantine? And, and maybe what metrics do you look at when determining if it was in fact successful? I mean, we have to remember this was a mass quarantine that affected 60 million people. It was unprecedented. I was very worried about it because it congregated a lot of people together in Wuhan. But recently, the World Health Organization um, has praised China. Um, they've said that the rest of the world should use the China model. I have grave doubts about that um, because it's true that cases have gone down in China. But they've also gone down in South Korea. So I don't know that you need those draconian measures. But, you know, let's even assume for the moment that it was effective. There's still a big cost. We all know about the economic cost. The stock markets are going down. Um, supply chains are disrupted. Uh, uh, work environments and workers are disrupted. Um, but there are also enormous human rights implications. It's a balance. We have to balance public health with civil liberties and human rights. People have asked me, you know, could we have a mass quarantine or a lockdown in the United States? Could we lock down in New York City? Um, and I think it's inconceivable in the United States, even though we are seeing it in another liberal democracy, which is Italy. Americans wouldn't accept the degree of social control that was needed 
um, in China or the intrusive surveillance. We need to be uh, sensible. So what then should our overall goal be here? And I think this would be a good opportunity to talk about what we mean by flattening the curve. What we need to do is tried and true public health measures. We need to really ramp up our diagnostic testing. We also need to test not patients, but in random samples in the community so that we can see what's going on silently, but below the radar, because I suspect we have a lot of silent transmission going on. We're going to need then to isolate people who are sick, quarantine those who've been exposed. I think we're going to probably uh, need to do school closures and closures and, and cancellations of public events. Those are the kinds of things we need to do. And if we could do those kinds of social distancing, isolation, keeping people away from one another, we would flatten the curve. In other words, instead of cases going up, 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 we would bend it to flatten it out a bit. And that buys us time because you know days, weeks matter. Um, it buys us time to actually use our public health tools, but it also buys us time to develop effective specific treatments. And then ultimately it buys us a little more time to get, you know, what is the holy grail, which is a vaccine. But that probably won't be for another year to a year and a half. In your opinion, is it still uh, possible for us in the United States to prevent a kind of worst case scenario with this outbreak? I think if we rapidly uh, do a surge response, surge funding, um, and do the kinds of measures we've been talking about, like isolation, social distancing, more testing, um, contact tracing, uh, I think uh, we stand a, you know, a reasonable chance of bringing the numbers down. We do have good public health agencies and we need to use them with science-based, evidence-based approaches in a proportionate way. Thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, thank you. Take care.